You want to get a job in the cloud industry, but you've been finding it to be a bit more difficult than you anticipated. You've been getting rejection after rejection, and now you're wondering if you have what it takes to crack this industry. But what if I told you there was a simple five-step process you could follow that will take you from getting ghosted by recruiters to securing that cloud offer you've been searching for? Most cloud beginners don't follow any processes on their journey, which leads to problems like being stuck in tutorial hell, which is where you keep jumping from one to tutorial to another, doing putting in a lot of effort, but without really achieving any results and you feel like you're wasting a lot of time. This lack of structure means that you're not actually learning the skills that employers are looking for, which leads to more rejection when you apply for jobs. Now, I don't want that for you, which is why I'm going to walk you through the five simple steps in this video. This simple process has helped dozens of people all across the world break into the cloud industry. And I'm talking of people with no technical background of experience. You know, some of the people who've used this successfully are teachers, nurses, scientists, factory workers, and trust me, if they can do it, you can do it too. Are you ready? Let's jump right into it. Let's start with a simple analogy. Let's say you've been invited to a really fun party on the other side of town. You're really excited to go and you get sent the address. Now you realize you've never been to this address before, but you figure you can find your way there. So rather than using a navigation system like Google Maps or something, you decide, you know what, I'm just gonna figure it out. And so you walk from one street to another, you catch a cab, you get a bus, and you, know, you realize you can't find this destination that you really want to get to. And you get lost and you get confused and ultimately you miss the party. This is a perfect example for people who try to break into the cloud industry. They think they can figure it out on their own. And so they follow random tutorials, they learn different technologies, and they hope that by doing all these random things, they can break into the cloud industry. But people, hope is not a strategy. This brings us nicely to the first step in the process, which is get a learning roadmap. When you try to break into the cloud industry, the first thing you need is a learning roadmap. This roadmap should not only tell you what technologies you need to learn, but also the order in which you need to learn them. This is because a lot of cloud technologies are built on top of each other. So a lot of the times by learning one technology, it will make it easier to learn another technology further down the line. Let me give you an example. Before you learn CI/CD, it's important that you've also learned the Linux command line. This is because a lot of CI/CD commands are based off the Linux command line. So if you don't know the Linux command line and you try to learn CI/CD, you'll find that you struggle. But if you learn those two with the right order, then you'll find out that learning CI/CD is a lot easier after you've learned the Linux command line. A benefit of a good learning plan is that it provides structure that gives you confidence as you learn, especially when things get difficult. Here are the general technologies I recommend cloud beginners to learn and the order to learn them in. You start with the Linux command line, then you do some AWS projects. Then you learn Terraform to automate the AWS projects you've done. Then you learn some Git. And then from there, you can then learn CI CD, which way you can start deploying projects automatically into AWS. Then you learn some Python and serverless and much more. But if you want to know how you can get a more detailed roadmap, I'll give it to you at the end of this episode. So keep watching. Once you've got a learning plan and know what technologies you need to learn, we can then move on to step two, which is master technology fundamentals. This means that you not only need to understand why you're learning these technologies, but also get to grips with their basic commands. I've noticed that when beginners try to learn new technologies, they skip this step and immediately try to start building complex projects. This leads to them being confused and quitting. Now, there is a time for complex projects, but that's further down the line in the process. It's really important at the beginning to just focus on getting to grips with the basic commands and just understanding the technology at a really basic level. For example, if you're learning Python, rather than trying to immediately build an Instagram clone, it's very important to understand the basic syntaxes of Python, understand what strings and integers are, understand how to write for loops and while loops, understand how to write functions. The reason it's important is that these are the building blocks that you can use to build more complex projects. If you're on YouTube and enjoying this content, give this video a like because that knows that you want more stuff like this and I can make more. And why not subscribe if you're new here? It really helps the channel grow. 
Now that you've mastered the technology fundamentals and understand the basic commands, we can move on to step three, which is to build simple projects. Simple projects are a great way to build your confidence with that technology you're learning. And it also helps you to troubleshoot when issues arrive because there's less complexity to it. So it's easier to pinpoint where the issue is. Let me give you an example of a simple, basic AWS project you can do today. I want you to deploy a WordPress server on an EC2 instance in AWS. Now you can just use the default subnet and you'll probably need to install a database on the server. Now, the reason this is a simple project is because all you have to worry about is configuring WordPress in EC2. Now you notice it's not really best practice. We're not looking at security, scalability, reliability, all the things you'd need to do in, like, in a real world situation. All you're doing is just figuring out, getting WordPress on an EC2 instance, testing it and ensuring that it works. That's it. And what you'll find is that there'll be a lot of issues to troubleshoot just doing that alone. And because it's so simple, it makes it easier to pinpoint the issues. Think of it as a simple proof of concept. Once you've completed a basic project like this, we can then move on to step four, which is build advanced projects. Advanced projects are projects that reflect how that technology is deployed in the real world. These projects are usually more complex, but what that signals is that hiring managers know that you have what it takes to be successful in their organization. And this is how you stand out. Earlier on, we looked at a basic WordPress deployment in AWS. Now, how can we make this more advanced? Here's how. Now, rather than deploying the WordPress server in the default public subnet, I want you to create a VPC with three public subnets and three private subnets. Now, I want you to install WordPress on a server or a virtual machine in the private subnets because that makes it more secure. I also want you to spin up an RDS instance, which acts as a database for the WordPress server. Pop that also in a private subnet. Next, I want you to create an application load balancer in the public subnet that would route the traffic from the wider internet into the EC2 instance in a private subnet. And then using security groups, I want you to network all these pieces together. Now you can see this is a lot more complicated than our first scenario of the basic setup, but this is actually more reflective of how servers like this are deployed in the real world. And if you can come up with high quality projects like this, you will definitely stand out from all the other candidates who are just doing simple projects if they've done any projects at all. It is important to have multiple high quality projects like this across all the technologies you're learning. So not only for AWS, but also for Terraform, CICD, Python, serverless, and more. It's important to have multiple high quality cloud projects to stand out. Once you've completed all these advanced projects, you can then move on to step five, which is communicate your experience effectively. I have found that a lot of cloud beginners have really poor communication skills, and this really holds them back in their job search. If you want to break into the cloud industry, it's important to learn how to craft your resume in a way that attracts the attention of recruiters. And this involves communicating your skills and experience effectively. A lot of cloud beginners don't know how to write their resume in this way. And this means that they don't get any calls from recruiters because their resume just doesn't stand out. Once you have your resume crafted, you also need to learn how to interview effectively to impress hiring managers. This involves learning how to communicate all your projects confidently. This involves understanding what the company you're interviewing with values. These are all the things that come together to make you an attractive candidate, because if you can come across as confident in your interviews, you will really impress the hiring managers and they'll see you fitting in well with their team. I would argue that your communication skills are even more important than your technical skills because I've known cloud beginners who've been able to secure jobs over more technical candidates because they've been able to communicate their skills and experience effectively. I've also known candidates who are very technically skilled, but because they have poor communication skills, they've not received any job offers because their communication has been holding them back. So make sure you work on this because it's very important. Now that we've gone through the five-step process that you need to secure that first cloud job, I want you to ask yourself these questions. Do you have access to a good learning roadmap? 
Have you learned the technology fundamentals? Have you built basic projects in these technologies you're learning? Have you then gone on to build more advanced projects and more complex projects for these technologies? Do you know how to write about these projects on your resume in a way that attracts recruiters? Do you know how to talk about these projects in an interview setting in a way that impresses hiring managers? If the answer to any of these questions is no, then I recommend you check out our program at cloudcareermentor.com. Not only would you get access to a structured learning plan and a learning roadmap, you also get high quality hands-on projects you can take that will really improve your cloud skills and technologies. My goal with this channel is to make breaking into the cloud industry as easy as possible. So if you're ready to take the right steps, get your hands dirty, build multiple high quality cloud projects, then click here or the link is in the description below, cloudcareermentor.com. I look forward to seeing you there. See you in the next video.